reservoir with my red inflatable kayak in it has a pretty decent visibility. This is called Trail Bridge Reservoir. And it, uh, uh, again, the visibility is pretty decent here. And we'll be going across the lake to uh, go under a couple of culverts. And uh, so, and here we are across the lake, a couple of culverts. The <clears throat> There are two of them. One of the one on the right has baffles uh, across it, uh, which allow the fish to jump up. It's kind of like a, a fish ladder, I guess you would call it. Um, again, the the visibility is pretty decent here. They uh, dump a bunch of uh, Christmas trees uh, in here to uh, decompose, and so the fish will have some place to hang around. I think that's the idea. Uh, this is fairly shallow here, probably about 20 feet or so, and <clears throat> this whole lake is only about 50 feet. It's a it's a uh, man-made uh, reservoir. They do get some power uh, off uh, a generator uh, or a dam on the uh, far end of it. So now we're going to be coming up into the bubbles here, and again the. Uh, one on the right is going to be, the, you can see there's uh, uh, some little moss and stuff. Um, so, here we are. This is what it would look like if you were under a small waterfall. Uh, you can see that the uh, one on the right that you just saw, as opposed to the one on the left, which is the one straight ahead, um, that has a, f the one straight ahead, the water just flows directly and it's not broken by the baffles. Uh, now I'm going to be just swimming around here. There's my... You'll see I'll be dragging a piece of white uh, connected to that yellow thing there. The yellow thing is actually a uh, a contractor's tape and what I do is I hook my kayak to the contractor's tape and then I drag it around behind me, and uh, then occasionally I'll get it tied around my feet, as you can see. <clears throat> but uh, that way when I'm uh, surface, the, my kayak is right above me there. This is a lake where it's fairly cold, and so you don't have people water skiing and going you know, 50 miles an hour, and where you have to kind of duck and make sure that you don't get run over as you surface. <clears throat> some big boulders here. I'm trying to show the temperature, which uh, you can't see. This is usually, oh, 48 to maybe 55 or so degrees. This comes off of Clear Lake, which is very cold. Clear Lake is about 42, even in the summer. And uh, this one picks up a little bit of uh, uh, water from another lake, but, um, so, we'll flicker through these. Now we're approaching what looks like a concrete wall, which is exactly what it is. If you look in the, uh, right in the center there, you can see there's a, uh, a hole on the lower right side there. What I'm doing is I'm coming up, uh, approaching a tunnel, the skirting, uh, on the side of a tunnel. You can see that, that little piece of uh, algae there just sort of went down and then dropped down and <laughs> took off. So <clears throat> this is a tunnel that comes about seven miles with about a 500 foot uh, vertical drop uh, from another lake of reservoir. And I'm going to take this rock and drop it down in front of the opening and um, show you what happens here. So you'll see, we'll take this rock and drop it. There it goes. And zoom, it goes sailing off. That was about the size of a bowling ball, I guess. So the next logical thing, of course, is to drop down in front of it. Now, the water is flowing into the lake, and so you're not going to end up in who knows where uh, being sucked into the hole. You're going to be pushed out of the hole. So as you drop down, and take a little bit of time here, you can see that uh, we're going to be moving along here. The bubbles are moving along pretty fast. And uh, 
you kind of go for a good little ride here. Um, so the way I discovered this lake is actually this comes in at a 90 degree angle to the uh, length. It's kind of a, a long, narrow lake, and uh, way up near the end, the far end, the shallow end, uh, this uh, water comes in, and I was on the uh, side of the lake going up toward the end of it, and I felt this very strong current coming in from my right side, and I thought, well, that's weird, because the, uh, uh, that would be the, say, the east side, the uh, actual stream that flows into this lake is coming from the north side, and I thought, well, but I, I checked my compass. So, basically, it's like, you know, the, the stream is coming in from noon, uh, nine o'clock, and this very strong current was coming in from th uh, three o'clock. So I turned and uh, went, uh, followed a back eddy, basically, and uh, got all the way up to the edge of it. There's always a, whenever you have something like this where there's a, a lot of water flowing out of something, there's always a back current on the sides. Uh, fortunately, otherwise you wouldn't be able to uh, approach it, of course. This is my friend Jim. Uh, used to go diving with him. He eventually moved to Arizona and took up golf. Uh, and uh, good, good diver though. Good, good buddy. We did a lot, of, a lot of good dives together. So we're going to go over again and do this one again. I think possibly uh, you know, two or three more times, and I'll explain a little bit more. Um, so here we are, we're coming on to the, on the other side of this tunnel. Our first approach was on uh, the one side, and now we're coming up on the other side of the skirting. And we're going to turn here and then drop down in front of it. And there's the opening. There's a lot of fish that just swim right around there. So here we are, and we're going off to the races here. Obviously, I'm not swimming as fast, and I don't have a boat or anything like this. This is just the current shooting along. Fortunately, there's nothing. There's only one log that you'll see uh, going across it, which is you know, only about a foot and a half uh, off the ground there. So it's not like you're going to run into anything. Here comes Jim. You can push it on and follow me. <clears throat> See that log here fairly soon, I think. Turn around the camera. So, I'm actually, what I'm doing now is I'm dubbing an audio track, which I'm going to see if I can blend with the uh, video. Uh, my original attempts of doing that were not successful. Um, uh, the level of the bubbles was so high that uh, you couldn't hear um, my voice, so I, uh, there's, there's that big log that I was talking about. That's the only thing that you really have to kind of dodge, which is not, and by that time you're almost over at the other side of the lake, so it's not that big a deal. Um, not a lot of stuff on the bottom, just some rocks, and yeah, again, this is a, uh, a stream that they just dammed up and uh, put a hydro plant on it. watch here. So, we'll go back and do one more, and then we will get the, you know, we'll go up to Clear Lake after this. There's actually a series of four lakes. The, there's Clear Lake, which you'll see. There's another small lake called Carmen Diversion, which I will go in. It's about 15 feet deep, uh, and that's where the water flows. Uh, from Carmen Diversion into this lake, which is called Smith Reservoir. <clears throat> and then from Smith Reservoir, it goes through a tunnel down into that uh, first lake we saw with all the bubbles. Now we're at Clear Lake. This is the best lake. Uh, very cold. Um, this tree, These trees were actually buried uh, by uh, uh, the water filling up from uh, a volcano that uh, came across the end of this valley 
and created this lake. This lake is about 190 feet deep. Uh, the end, the good end, which is this end, this is the north end, uh, is only about 50 feet deep at the max. And anyway, what happened was, this happened about uh, 2,000 years ago, I think. Um, the lava flow happened and blocked the lake, uh, or created the lake, and then uh, the trees are still real trees. They haven't petrified, which is a, a process where the uh, where the wood actually turns into uh, uh, rock. But uh, this this is uh, these are these trees are still real trees. And, um, the water is very clean, very cold. There's not a lot of uh, stuff in there, and uh, that shadow's right down there in the bottom as it fades off to the left there, is uh, a boat. Um, well, this is probably about a 20-foot depth right here. Um, there's a lot of very, very loose silt uh, in here. Um, so the light patterns are quite amazing. And, and uh, one of the people say, oh, what do you see? There, that's me uh, shooting down, looking at my shadow as I'm going along here. You can see the light patterns and the spiraling effect on that uh, log, which is I find very fascinating. The, uh, the light patterns are kind of like spider webs that just sort of move and, and shift and, and uh, it's just, there's a the spiraling effect uh, again on, on that log. Now, these, lo these are actually trees that fell into the lake as opposed that were in the lake and uh, uh, got trapped. These are the trees that were on the side of the lake and uh, that probably just eventually because of erosion just fell into the lake and are there. <clears throat> Again, the light patterns are quite fantastic. They it kind of reminds me of the Northern Lights. Let's see if we can get a split here. Um, this little line that you're seeing in the left center is uh, actually the flow into the lake. You can see there's quite a current in this lake which is unusual because lakes don't have currents. Um, this little thing right in the center there, this, I call this the blue tunnel. There's, um, there are two pools that are up on the other side of that blue tunnel, and uh, the water actually just comes pouring out of the rock. If you've uh, taken a look at that uh, uh, album, you can see there's a rock there that, uh, where there's water just dribbling out of it, and uh, this is what it looks like as it passes from that spring uh, into the uh, lake. Uh, you can see there's quite a current there. Really fascinating, uh, just, just this, the idea of the tunnel. Um, when the water is fairly high early in the season, I can actually, I've paddled my kayak up there and uh, gone in there. <clears throat> when the water drops down in, in the, as uh, the lake goes all down a little bit uh, when all the rainfall uh, and the runoff has, you know, dissipated. Um, then the uh, what I do is I just park my kayak right up at the edge of that and just walk into the um, that great spring. This um, kind of just looks like sand dunes here. These depressions are actually. Um, Again, there's a lot of silt here, as you can see, that white stuff. The, uh, those depressions that you saw a moment ago, uh, there to the uh, about 10 o'clock position, about 9 o'clock now, <clears throat> they are uh, wells where water just kind of wells up from the, uh, uh, the lava. Um, and this is called Lava Hill, obviously enough. It's a lava hill. And again, you can see there's the uh, little small waves uh, yeah, that are, are moving in and has light patterns there. And here you are looking up at my kayak, and this is pretty much the end of it, and there's my contractor's tape. So, Okay, that pretty much finishes it up, and we'll see if I can get this thing synchronized and 